So welcome to TV Savalas. Hey. Uh, today I have two beautiful people. Um, I got Pastor Slaughter and uh, First Lady Slaughter of Liberty Church of God in Christ, Bay Point, California. Uh, I just want to start from the beginning from you guys. I'm going to start with First Lady, if that's okay. Sure. Um, so, well, let me go back for a second. The reason I, um, I'm having this interview with you guys is um, for my channel, I like to promote people and their stories. And I think it's a great part of uh, history. And it's something that we can always keep and share with future generations. A lot of times, for especially the black, com black community, the history gets lost. Ah. And this helps to keep a piece of that. Maybe one day your grandchildren, great-grandchildren may come upon this and be like, oh, that's what how mother, that's how uh, grandma was, or that's how grandpa was, or, yeah. you know, so they can get some authentic, organic um, situate, uh, knowledge of you two. Yeah. All right. Um, so I'm sorry, with you, First Lady. Uh, where did you uh, grow up? Um, thank you for inviting us to this um, interview. Uh, but I grew up in LaGrange, Kentucky. Um, it's a town about 30 miles northwest of Louisville, Kentucky. And so I grew up there and was there until I went off to the military in uh, 1985. So um, did you go to the military right out of um, high school or was that something a little later? No, I went to the military about two years after high school, um, graduated in 89. And then in 85 is when I went into... Um, <laughs> you said you graduated in 89. Oh, 83. yeah, you're right. I graduated in 83, okay. 1983. And then I went into the military in 1985. Okay, nice. Uh, I'm going to uh, pastor. Uh, so where did you grow up, sir? I grew up in the great city of West Pittsburgh, which okay. is now called Bay Point. All right. Actually, right next door. All right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so uh, you were also in the military, correct? Yes. Did you go right out of high school or? I believe I went in three months after I got out of high school. Oh, so you just. I went straight in from high school to the military. Oh. Graduated in 84 and went to the Navy in 84. Served okay, till 88. 84, 88. So did y'all meet in the military? That's where I met this beautiful lady. Yes, yes we did. Oh my goodness. <laughs> we I met would, in the military. I would tell he you was so. my boyfriend. <laughs> <laughs> I would tell you the first story you met her in the hangar bay, but I won't tell that much. Oh my goodness, the hangar bay. I know about the hangar bay. Um, <laughs> no, but it was, yeah, I met her in there and we soon after got together. We met, I got out in 88 and she got out in 89. And we took together and we got married in 1990. Wow. Yes. That's beautiful. This year will be 30 years. Yes. 30 years. Yes. Wow. Yes. <laughs> everybody, everybody ain't able. I yes, know. Uh, 30 years. So, uh, mm -hmm. also, you know, I said what I said at the beginning about um, why I want you guys here, but also, both of you actually, uh, probably unknowingly, have uh, been an influence in my life personally, ah. um, separately and together. Amen. And um, I don't know if you guys even remember, but I believe it was you guys maybe uh, 18th anniversary. Mm -hmm. And I ran into you guys at the bar station in MacArthur Bar Station. Mm -hmm. It could have been your 18th or 20th anniversary. But I remember I ran into you guys. On our way to San Francisco. See? <laughs> she, she remember. I don't remember that. Yeah, yeah. I remember. I, mean, I was like, I was like uh, yeah. elder then. He wasn't even past the elder. Uh -huh. And mm -hmm. I was just like, yeah, we're celebrating our, uh, our anniversary. Yeah. like, wow. You yes. know, just to see you guys randomly out together doing stuff as a, mm -hmm. as a couple. That was beautiful. Mm -hmm. um, yes, yes. So you guys me in the military. And then, so let me go uh, to you, First Lady. Yes, sir. Uh, when was it that you fell in love with the Lord? Oh, my. You know, I, I, I truly thank God. I think about as a child, my grandmother used to take me, you know, to, to church. And, you know, I was had that foundation. But when I truly fell in, Lord, in love um, with the Lord, it was around 90... Around 97 is when, 1997 is when I turned my life over to the Lord. I had been, you know, coming to church and, you know, learning, being in the prayer, but making a conscious decision that, you know, for God I live, you know, and for God I die was in um, 1997. What, I mean, uh, was it anything in particular that happened to you that made you uh, have that decision or did God speak to you um, or was it just like, uh, I just want to commit just to be committed. You know, um, with me, I had lost my mother, you know, early on in um, 
in 91. Yeah, in 91. I had lost my mother January 91. And, and it was like an emptiness. Um, and I was really broken behind that. Really didn't know how to go on with life. And then seeing the example of um, Superintendent Slaughter and Mother Slaughter, um, the love and, and the joy and the peace, you know, that they had in their life, I wanted it, you know. And so life struggles and, you know, the loss of my mother was the primary reasons why I turned my life over to God. Oh, wow. That's mm -hmm. a... That's very uh, deep right there. Yes. Um, I know what it's like to lose a mother, so mm. uh, I, um, I have empathy. Um, yes. So, uh, Pastor, I know um, you you are, uh, what's this, what they call it? Uh, PK. PK? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, right? Yes. So, uh, when did you fall in love with the Lord? When was that moment for you? Actually, I... Yeah, at an early age I did, but I went away and I got caught up in the, the streets and drugs and all this stuff right here. But I, I came back again when I got a, um, I was in an accident in 1998. Okay. Was it a car accident? A car accident, oh, yeah, right around the road here. I went through the windshield, my face went through the windshield. And as I woke up, I was that scripture that I'm, actually my mother talked about today. How long? Halt you between two opinions. If God be God, serve him. Mm. If Bill serve him, but choose you this day. And then I still went on with struggling back and forth. Actually, back about 2010 was when I really got committed and, 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 and dedicated for God, correct? Wow, so it just... It was... I say something about when you first came. Mm -hmm. I grew up in the church, and we know the church, and she didn't really grow up in the church. Okay. Matter of fact, my mother was sitting right here, and I think we sit right behind her, and we was having church, and the spirit started moving. My mother started speaking in the tongues, so she nudged me. She said, Fred, what is she doing? I said, she's speaking in tongues. But who's she talking to? I said, she's talking to God. <laughs> but what did she say? I said, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> and it was something because she never experienced that. Yes. And now she speaks in tongues when God makes her move. I just thought it was kind of funny how she came in there because she really didn't grow up in church. A lot of times, we don't know the church rules or how to clap your hands or wouldn't do certain things. So God has to really, you know, come in and, and turn your life around. And God saved her. And like I said, when she got saved, she got saved. Wow. Amen. That's crazy. That's I still crazy. clap off a beat. <laughs> uh, you did good today, huh? <laughs> <laughs> uh, but in all seriousness, um, so two different, totally different uh, ways to get to the Lord. Yes. Correct. You know, yes, that's, totally. uh, that's something that's uh, very unique, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, and everybody's testimony is, is different. Right. Um, so you guys uh, meet in the military. Um, get married, mm -hmm. um, start coming to church. Mm -hmm. um, and so, Pastor, your, your father is uh, was the pastor of the church, and he recently uh, passed away not too long ago. 2015, mm -hmm. October 15, 2015. Mm -hmm. And just, uh, can you talk about the influence your father had uh, just upon your life and just the mm -hmm. church? My father had a, had a, a great impact on me for like the last seven years of his life. We spent a lot of time together, and I, I learned a lot from him. As far as as far as in the church, as far as life, and learn some things that you know his ethics on work. Mm -hmm. he, he was really, he really about work, and that's what it is now. You teach our young people more. Our young people, like like you, get get a job and take care of something when you're young. It was something that he told me that I should have grabbed, I held to when I was young. But he said, you need to do what you have to do now. So you could do what you want to do later. Mm -hmm. A lot of us do what we want to do now. Then we out here 50, 60, 60 doing what we have to do to, to survive. Right, right. And right. he told me a lot of good things. I liked him as far as the ministry in the church and what to do and what not to do when you come into ministry. And a lot of some ministers want to come into a church and a, and a, a ministry and change everything around, replace this, replace that. He said people don't like change. Mm. So it's a subtle change. It's a subtle change that would that, that be more effective. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then one thing that's coming to mind now, that would be with him. I know it was him. He's like, being a good leader is not making someone do something, but being a good leader is making them want to do it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's powerful. Yes. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. powerful wisdom. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. So back to First Lady. Mm -hmm. um, so now your husband, uh, well, the influence of uh, Pastor Superintendent Pastor Slaughter mm -hmm. and, and, and First Lady and uh, the angel of the church. Amen. Uh, on, uh, how, how, did, how did their relationship affect you? You said it was influential yes mother slaughter was a big influence in my life i i watched her um and her life was just something that it, it really inspired me it really encouraged me 
um, a strong, godly woman uh, of God. And she was the one that really, you know, started me with the prayer. You know, we started with a 6 a.m. prayer. And then, um, and she would teach me, you know, really how to listen to God. You know, I remember, you know, in my walk with God, in my early walk, um, yeah, I used to wake up angry. I just have to be honest. It's like, I used to wake up angry and I was like, mother, it's like, you know, why am I feeling, you know, like this? And she was like, you know, just think about what happened, you know, at that moment that the anger you know, started, you know, and it was something that, you know, I thought about and, and when I was seeking the Holy Ghost and it's like, I was trying to really figure out what the Holy Ghost was. I, I'm the type of person that sometimes I get my own self in trouble because I need to know, right, right. <laughs> I need to know why it's happening like this. And so I went on the internet and I Google the Holy Ghost and, you know, try to look up different things about the Holy Ghost. The wrong ghost. Yes. <laughs> and it was giving me examples of the wrong, wrong ghost. ghost. It was like confusing. It's like, oh no. And I called mother. I said, mother, I said, I know we're not going to understand everything. I said, but I need to understand what the Holy Ghost is and the impact that it will have on my life. And she said, baby, she said, just look at it like this. She said, just look at it as God overshadowing your life with his spirit. Mm -hmm. And I understood that. And it was like, you know, it's like when you think about a shadow and you think about a shadow of God's spirit overshadowing my life, I understood that. And less than a, you know, 24 hours Later, you know, I received the Holy Ghost. So Mother Slaughter was a great inspiration um, for me in my walk. Yes. And a lot of that had to do with you being so far away from home as well? Um, well, you know, because of course I wasn't raised in church. My grandmother took me to church. We we didn't do a lot of church things. We did a lot of worldly things. You know, we went to the club and you know, did this and that and the other. But um you know, it's back to, like I said, there was that emptiness after the loss of my mom. And, um, and, and, and just to, to say, when the Lord, the, the night he filled me with the Holy Ghost, I actually felt my insides filling up. Wow. It, was like, it was like something on the inside of me just started filling up. And it was just so impactful. And so I learned to live um, with my mother being gone. I learned to live, and, and I still write today certain, um, like, murders she wrote, and, you know, she used to love watching that. And um, Mama is always there, but God gave me the strength to live uh, in him because now, you know, he became my mother. Mm. He became my father. He mm. became my sister and my brother. And, you know, I thank God for, you know, mother and dad slaughter being in my life. But God was my, you know, my ultimate parents and my guidance. Amazing, amazing. Mm -hmm. uh, Pastor Slaughter. It's kind of hard for me to say that. <laughs> yeah, I know. Pastor Slaughter for so long. I know. Uh -huh. so we don't a lot of them still call me Pastor Fred. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, and so your father passes away and then you take over the church. Right. Uh, what a, uh, I'm not going to say a burden, what a, uh, a, not a weight, I'm not going to say a burden, a challenge? It was a challenge, it was a challenge because, like I said, he had been there almost 50 years. I believe they had just celebrated their 50 year anniversary. They did. And so it was 50 years of him being passing there, and now I'm coming in, and you know, some of the things that he taught me and taught and instilled in me were there, but I mean, he had come into with members, and like, just like you said now, a lot of people still, they still don't call me Pastor Slaughter. Just mm. because it's there. Right. Pastor Fred, I'm Pastor Slaughter. Yeah, I do Pastor Fred. I'm Pastor Slaughter. Hey, Pastor Fred. Right? <laughs> right, right. <laughs> but it's something that is it's just a challenge, though. Then, just to be really, you know, because he, he often said about describing a ministry or, or a Christian, you could describe it in two words. And the two words are simply helping others. Mm. And, you know, and it's, it's, it's a lot of, it's a, it's a great impact and responsibility when you pastor and, 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 and leading a group of people that the, the balance, the weight of the balance of their life is weighing on you. Mm -hmm. Giving them good guidance and good instructions, yeah. good words. So it's, 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 a, it's, a, it's a, great, a great opportunity, but it's also a challenge and it's uh, sort of a great responsibility, I'll put mm -hmm. it that way. Yeah. 
-hmm. So you something that resonated with me. You said helping others. Mm -hmm. um, man, I, I can do nothing but salute you uh, because I think you've been, as long as I've known you, you've been doing that. I, and I don't know if you remember this, but uh, it was a while back where I seen you. I was living uh, downtown and my dad wanted me to change a starter on a car. Uh, I'm dead. I'm not. He was over here. Down uh, Marina Heights. Yeah. And, uh, I seen you. I said, oh. They go, they go, uh, they go, uh, Elder Fred, Elder Fred, hey, hey, uh, <laughs> you know, hey, you, you, could you, uh, uh, I don't even know if I paid you or nothing, man. You probably just did it out of the actually, out of didn't the you love. owe me nothing? No, I'm just <laughs> <laughs> oh, and, and I, I do remember and that. You though, put man. that starter on that car for uh, for me, but for my dad, and uh, my dad was real ill at the time and sick, so right, that's that's when I say, uh, both of you guys have influenced me differently and mm -hmm. been there for me separately, mm -hmm. but also together. Mm -hmm. and so I remember that. Like I remember you guys uh, seeing you guys for your anniversary. Mm -hmm. um, you you were always willing to help when I reached out, you know, and so I thank you for that. Um, I remember First Lady Slaughter uh, when I was an active member here, um, just still young in the Lord, and uh, I was going through a lot, and I was, remember I was in the back, and you just came and you just gave me a hug. You didn't say nothing, you didn't, you, you didn't preach to me, you just gave me a hug, and that hug to this day still meant so much to wow. me. I don't know if you remember that. Yeah, but, I do. <laughs> but, uh, I do. And, and um, you guys uh, have definitely been an influence. And then last thing, um, before I, I give it back to you guys that I wanted to uh, thank you guys for, was I did a, um, I threw an event at Pastor Manny's church, mm -hmm. a youth um, rally. rally. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And um, I asked both of you guys to come and do a short word or a speech. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Sorry, my daughter's walking That's around. That's okay. She's fine. Uh, she, she's she, fine. she made history with us. Uh -huh. <laughs> and, um, I know I asked Pastor Fred. You came out and spoke. First lady, uh, first lady, you came out and spoke, and um, it was beautiful. And I want to thank you guys for that again. Um, I don't You're know if I paid you guys for that either, but <laughs> <laughs> you know it's a lot of money. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be but, um, Keep on interviewing. <laughs> no, but you know I'm gonna say two, two three things. I'm done about my dad, my father, and my mother. So it'll be on history business on the page. But it's three things, two things that my dad said. He said, if you listen to me, I can help you. Mm -hmm. And the other one was, and on the board, I don't know if you can see it behind me, but to keep sweet, keep smiling, and keep stepping. And the reason why he said that, because if you keep sweet, you won't offend anybody. Mm -hmm. And if you keep smiling, they won't know what they're doing is affecting you. Mm -hmm. And if you keep stepping, it really won't matter. Mm -hmm. And my mother, God bless her heart, two things. I'm, I, I said one thing, but it's two. Mm -hmm. If you don't take care of business, <laughs> business is going to take care of you. <laughs> and if you keep doing what you've been doing, you're you'll going to keep, keep getting what, what you've been, been getting. getting. Uh -huh. Amen. Powerful, powerful. Amen. And I, and, oh. and I just wanted to, to add, you know, you were saying, did I ever thank you? You know, your family. And it's like we just do things, you know, out of caring and love for our family. So it doesn't always necessarily mean you know that you have to think because you know though you have you know but your family Savalas oh, and and you it. and your family are our family and have always been and so you know we just love you and we appreciate you, Thank you. and that's up to too that you were spotlighting us i think you need to be one that spotlight yeah absolutely um, got went to the military yes. came out purchased your home started a family had a young man i i, I I applaud you. Business, yes. I applaud you, man. Yes. Well, well, all that, I remember before I left to go to boot camp. Uh, both of you guys were Navy, just like I was, and I just remember uh, Pastor Slaughter telling me, uh, "Take advantage of everything," uh, <laughs> and that's what I did. That was in the back of my head while I was in boot camp. I'm doing push up sweat, and I remember emailing uh, First Lady um, when I was out to sea. I well. remember. I remember. Um, so you guys have definitely been influential in my life, and. Um, did you guys have any last words you may want to encourage people? Um, it doesn't even have to be about church or Christianity. It uh -huh. can be about life in general. Mm -hmm. Yes, I just want to say that it doesn't always matter how life started. Mm. You know, it's making a conscious decision on how you want your life to end. We all make mistakes in life. And if the Bible didn't think that we would, he wouldn't have a place for repentance. But even in our life and in our struggle, it is up to you how your journey ends. It's not a destination that we're on. This is a journey of life. And when we look at it's, this is our journey of life and we do what we do 
out of our love for God because he is our father and we will see him. And so don't worry about how life has started. Just be mindful of how your life will end. Powerful word. Yes. Baby, <laughs> you're all over the camera. She's a little bit. She, um, I just have two things to say. She said, she put it in a, in, a, in a nutshell, I'll say ditto, but two things that came to mind to me is that that we can't allow our our setbacks to make us sit back mm -hmm. and do what you say you're going to do and say what, you, say what you're going to do and do it. Mm -hmm. That's yes. what my dad told me. Yes. If you say you're going to do it, do it. If it hurts you, it breaks your back to do it. But if you got to do what you say you're going to do. Keep your word. Keep your word, word. Your word your is your bond. That's yes. my days. Powerful. That's why I didn't must and put him in here too. That's why he said when he bought his first home, the contract was only this wide. Now you buy a home with a contract. Because right. <laughs> people don't keep their word. Right, right. Uh -huh. Wow. Uh -huh. So I want to say uh, thank you guys. I appreciate you guys' time. Um, I know you guys have a busy rest of the evening. Thank you for the so, opportunity. I appreciate it. Yes. Until next time, TV Savalas. Peace out, everybody. Peace out. All right, TV Savalas. Yes.